unmute. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's Training Tuesday. Um, in the past, we've done another General Bar Support Training Tuesday, and today we're going to continue our exploration into that. I'm glad that you all could join us and to talk about the bar supports. And once again, I am Heidi Reese, and I am with Dayton Superior's Marketing Department. So just as a reminder, like every week, I um, just want to let you know that you're all muted so that you can enjoy this webinar and not have any distractions. But please go ahead and use the chat functionality if you have any questions during the time frame. Um, and we'll have a mini chat of questions and answer session at the very end for about five minutes. In addition, I wanted to let you know that each of our webinars are recorded and then we place them on the Dayton Superior YouTube channel, as well as our DaytonSuperior.com website. If you just search for product videos and you can get to all the ones, including the one that I just referenced of the other bar supports. So as I said before, we're going to be discussing bar supports to review what types and sizes that are available, how we're gonna choose the best for your application needs, the understanding how much you'll need and how to uh, estimate that for your project, the rebar requirements of bar supports, and if you have any questions on job sites that you need answered, we can do that as well. So today we have John Hankenhoff, who is the Director of Project Engineering with us today. And he has been with Dayton Superior's Product Engineering and Development for over five years. And I worked with him closely during that time, so he's a good guy. He's been involved with the design, the development, and the launch of many products in the Dayton Superior Accessories product line. His degree is in mechanical engineering with a background in design and development. And again, has been involved with industry organizations such as CRSI, PCA for the tilt, and PCA for the precast. He's always here to help keep Dayton Superior's products at the front of the industry requirements and innovations. So John, teach us more about bar support. Thank you, Heidi. Uh, thank you all for attending today. Uh, appreciate you joining this session to learn a little bit more about our bar supports. As Heidi mentioned, this training session will cover some basic information on bar supports. Um, we'll, we offer many styles of bar supports and uh, as well as many finishes or materials. That, and this will, training will help you to select the best one for your options. So bar supports are used pretty much in every formed concrete application, um, as well as um, some, some non-removable concrete formed applications. Um, they're used in beams, girders, joists, slabs, and pretty much everything in between that. Uh, the intended use for bar supports is specifically for supporting, spacing, and aligning steel reinforcement. It is meant for normal construction loads and not, not meant for supporting machinery, equipment, or concrete hoses, or anything of that nature. When selecting a bar support for your application, one of the primary determinations is the size or coverage needed. For bars, or for subgrade application, the coverage is determined based off of the spacing between the bottom rebar of the mat and the subgrade itself. Your project specifications and requirements will determine what the coverage is that you need. Um, that, that'll be job specific or design specific for whatever uh, pour is, is at hand. Here you can see an example of, uh, of what this coverage is for something on subgrade. So this is an example of our castle chair. Um, you see the, the distance between the bottom rebar the rebar is the, the green marks there. So that, that bottom one is the bottom mat. Um, <clears throat> and the difference between the bottom of that rebar and the subgrade itself is three quarter inch. So the size selection for this castle chair would be a three, three and one quarter inch castle chair. In some other applications, you may have uh, maybe two mats throughout your, your concrete pour. Um, you may have a bottom mat, and then on top of that, you'll have an upper mat. In order to space those two out, 
you will need a what we call an upper um, and that in this in this example here you can see an SBU it's a slab bolster upper and so what that will do is provide your space and alignment between your two mats of rebar determining the coverage for this application will require you to consider um, not one but two coverages you have to consider the bottom coverage as well as the top coverage <clears throat> in this example uh, your concrete thickness is 10 inches and the specified top coverage is two and a half inches and your specified bottom coverage is one and a quarter inch. So to, de to determine your size of your upper that you need, you will take your 10 inches and subtract your 2.5 top coverage and your 1.25 bottom coverage, as well as subtracting out the diameter of your rebars used. In this case, we have uh, one mat uses number four bar and one mat uses number five bar. So adding up the diameters of those rebar will give you one inch of rebar thickness for your number fours and one and a quarter inch thickness for your number fives. You subtract all of that away from your concrete thickness and that leaves you with a four inch space between your two mats. And so your SBU would be sized for a four inch SBU. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, when it comes to estimating um, your number of bar supports, that is one of the next mo most important determinations to make. Um, and, and what I mean by estimating is is determining the number of supports needed for any given area of your pour. Um, here we'll go through this uh, process of estimating for both individual chairs as well as continuous supports. For this example here, this um, irregular. <clears throat> rectangular shape. So here we'll start with individual chairs. And this this rectangular form or this rectangular slab um, is a 200 foot wide by 160 foot tall with a notch out in the bottom. So to calculate your total square footage of this slab, you would first take a look at your top rectangle and you would look at the 200 foot wide section and you would multiply that by the height of that top section, which would be found by your 160 minus your 90 feet of your notch out. So that would result in a top section of 14,000 square feet. Then you would do the same thing for the bottom rectangular section. You would multiply your width of 75 foot by 90 foot and you would come up with 6,750 square feet. Then you add those two sections together to get your total square footage. That would be 20,750 square feet. Now, CRSI recommends that bar supports be spaced no more than four foot on center, um, but we recommend a three foot spacing for our chairs, for individual chairs specifically. So in order to figure how many chairs you need, you will take your total square foot area for your pour and divide that by your coverage of your chair. So that would be by three foot by three foot, which would give you nine square feet. So 2,750 divided by nine square feet per chair would result in 2,306 chairs. As a rule of thumb, it's always good to um, add an additional 10% on for individual chairs for a, um, a, a little bit of cushion for in case you need to use a little bit more or maybe um, misplace some. So that adding that 10% would result in just over 2,500 chairs. Now th this next example is looking at the, the, same, the same slab that you're pouring, but using continuous chairs. It's a similar approach, but it focuses on the spacing of the bar supports as well and the bottom rebar direction. And what you're figuring is your linear feet of continuous bar support needed, as opposed to the individual chairs where you're figuring each how many each individual chairs you need. For this example, the green line shown here on the screen represent the rebar um, of the bottom mat. So the rebar is laid horizontal and your continuous bar supports would, would be set perpendicular to that. 
So if your rebar is running horizontal, your continuous bar supports would be perpendicular to that and running vertical. Again, we'll take a look at this first top larger rectangular section of your pour to figure your <clears throat> linear square, your square, excuse me, your linear feet needed. And then we'll look at the bottom section to figure your linear feet needed. So you'll, um, you'll take your 200 feet wide panel and you'll divide that by four feet. For continuous bar supports, we align ourselves with CRSI's recommendations of spacing no more than four feet on center. So dividing your 200 foot span by four feet spacing will give you 50. Then you will add one extra bar support to start with one additional row. You'll multiply that number of bar supports by the height of that rectangle, which is found by 160 minus 90 to take out that notch. And that will result in 3,570 linear feet. Then you'll go down to the bottom rectangular section. Again, divide your width by four for 75 divided by four and round up to 19 and add one more for starting with an additional row to come up with 20 rows. You will then take that 20 rows and multiply that by the height of that section, which is 90 feet leaving you with 1,800 linear feet. Again, you will add both sections together for a resultant of 5,550 linear feet. Again, it's always good to add some additional, <clears throat> additional linear, linear feet to these continuous supports. Um, for continuous sports, supports, we add 15%. Um, and that will account for any overlap and overage needed. So adding 15% to that will leave you with 6,385 linear feet. Here you can see um, a, a wide variety of the metal bar supports that we offer. Um, this table here shows, uh, a, like I said, a wide variety of our metal bar supports and what application they would be, uh, what they would be applicable to. <clears throat> We have options for um, for on slabs, on grade, for walls, foundations, precast elements, um, and many more. There, many of these chairs can be used for multiple applications. Um, some are more specific for others. Um, the on grade chairs may not be suitable for something that you might use in an exposed situation like a tilt up wall, uh, due to the way that that the footing of those bar supports will mate with the exposed surface of the concrete. This chart here is available in our bar supports handbook for uh, further review and information to find uh, a product offering that is best suitable for you and your application. Similarly, we have a table here um, with pictures of our plastic bar support options. Um, this includes, again, individual chairs as well as continuous chairs um, and goes through the same applications here uh, for, for your, various, your various types of products and, and where they are best suited to be used. Some chairs, um, again, are specifically for on-grade, um, and, and you can see those by um, the, the wide base that they may have or the large footprint that they'll, that they'll leave at the casting surface. In addition to our metal and plastic supports, we also have a small selection of um, cementitious supports, otherwise known as dobies. And these would be um, primarily used for, um, for slabs or on grade, anything below the surface to where you're not gonna have any exposure of that bar support to um, an exposed concrete surface after, um, after your forming and pouring is complete. In addition to those, we have some accessories to our bar supports um, and rebar accessories, and that includes some, uh, some wire tie and Cody clips. The wire tie is a, a pretty traditional way of um, connecting rebar at, a, at an intersection between the rebar. 
And the Cody Eclipse is a, a new offering for Dayton Superior. Um, it is a plastic clip that will uh, create a saddle tie or a saddle joint at the intersection of rebar to create a nice rigid connection. We also offer tie guns and Cody clip dispensing guns for uh, for efficiency and increased increased applications on the job site. As I mentioned before, uh, on grade applications. Um, they require more of a special type of support. Um, the footprint is really what matters here. Um, on an on-grade application, the, the footprint of that support tends to be wider um, or possibly sit on a, on a solid flat plate in order to keep it from sinking into that substrate, um, whether it be the soil or the gravel or something of that nature. It helps to keep and maintain that coverage that we spoke of earlier. So these supports would be used um, on anything that is not going to be exposed, um, you would you would not want to use these in any application to where you would maybe be tilting up a wall panel or um, a precast element, which would then be removed and um, and exposed to and visible to um, to anybody that would be looking at your your project in the long run. If you do have a project that will have an exposed concrete uh, cast surface or uh, remo removable forming, then you would want something that falls into the lines of our, maybe our tilt-up types of products to where that footprint is much smaller. Um, it's minimized, so it, it is either invisible or uh, very, very difficult to see. Um, so it leaves the impression of, um, of no support there at the surface. In addition to um, visibility of the footprint, corrosion is another um, area of concern for exposed bar supports at that surface of the concrete. So oftentimes bar supports in this application would come either plastic dipped or tipped with a plastic foot on the end of it or entirely made of plastic, um, like some of our plastic chairs or continuous plastic bar supports. Other options for these would be coated metal wire, such as an epoxied or a galvanized uh, bar, uh, continuous bar support or individual chair. The selection for whether it is tipped or dipped or uh, a coated wire is really going to be dependent on, um, on your requirements for your project or whatever the local um, jurisdiction will require, if it's a DOT work or uh, whatever the designer may have specified for their job. Each of them come with their own different different categories and uh, categorizations for their corrosion resistance and coverage offerings. The type of rebar that you will use um, also plays a role in which bar supports you would select. So if you are using plain rebar, Pretty much any bar support option um, would be a, a good one for you. There's no concern of, uh, of interaction or um, compatibility there. If you have plain bar, um, you're good to use a plain bar support, a galvanized or an epoxy coated bar support, um, or a plastic bar support in itself. But if you're going to go forward and use galvanized or epoxy rebar, uh, we would recommend that you would use uh, a bar support that would match that rebar's coating. So if you're going to use a galvanized bar, we would recommend that you would use a galvanized bar support um, and the same with epoxy. And fiberglass and stainless steel rebar, um, both of those are, are very well suited for a plastic bar support. So we went through uh, a quite a bit of information here in, um, in a short period of time, but we have a lot of uh, the same information that we have gone through today um, laid out very nicely in our bar support handbook and on our web pages. Uh, so I would I would encourage you to to look through some of our materials that we have there uh, for additional selection uh, selection assistance on on what your project may require or what um, what offerings we have. In addition to our, our literature on our website, um, YouTube is always a great resource for checking out um, different applications or one, one, one 
when one may use a certain type of bar support or how it may be used. Great, thanks, John. So um, just to remind you guys before I go through the slide, um, the, if you have any questions, go ahead and put them into the chat. But I did want to let you know that July Superior Deal is on the three Aztec, Aztec chairs that you see here. So the Aztec Easy Set chair, as well as the Easy chair, and then the Aztec Sand chair. And so contact your sales rep for details on the special pricing, and it goes through July. So call them today. Um, again, if you have any questions, there is some contact information for Chuck, who's our national training manager. Uh, if you want to go through a longer training, we can provide that to you. Um, go ahead and enter your chat questions and we can get them answered. As a reminder, I know I've said it already, but we do record these and we post them out on the YouTube as well as the Dayton Superior product video site. Uh, you can review past ones, like the one I mentioned before, where it was another bar support for the metal and plastic introductions. Um, today's is being recorded, and I will get you an email letting you know when it is available, so that if you couldn't make it in the beginning or somebody else wasn't able to come, you could forward that on to them. We do do these every Tuesday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I don't see any questions. I'll give it just a little bit more. I think John did such a good job that it's very, very well thought through. I appreciate it, John. You're welcome. My pleasure. All right. Well, if there's no questions, then that's it for today. And thank you all, and everyone have a happy Tuesday.